Hello, my name is Michael, and today I'm going to be taking you through the process that I use to create rotoscoped animations for Bannerman. Rotoscoping is an animation technique that involves drawing directly over the top of your reference footage. The benefits in animating in this style is a real fluid and lifelike animation. Uh, rotoscoping was widely used for both video games and cartoon animation in the past. Uh, since the introduction of 3D models for both video games and animated films, it's kind of fallen by the wayside. Uh, prominent examples of games that used rotoscoping in the past include Karatika, which I believe was the first, Prince of Persia, Flashback, and Another World, or Out of This World. Examples in film include an absolute ton of old Disney films, Heavy Metal, A Scanner Darkly. Okay, so here's what you'll need. First up, you're gonna need a video camera. Any sort will do. You just need some way to keep it steady and level. Whether that means you've got a DSLR on a tripod or a mobile phone just propped up with a book, that's up to you. Uh, personally, I use a GoPro with a magnet mount. Uh, the reason I use this is because A, I have it, and B, the wide angle lens helps me keep everything in frame. I'm shooting in a pretty small apartment for my reference footage. Next up, you're gonna need some video editing software. I use Adobe Premiere. You can use whatever you're comfortable with. It really doesn't, it's not hugely important which one you use. For our purposes, you just need the ability to cut and rearrange video clips. You need to be able to scale and position these clips and export the finished uh, video to separate image frames. And last up, you're gonna need some pixel art software of some sort. I use Pixel Edit and I do recommend it. Um, it is quite an inexpensive piece of software. It's only $9 at the time of recording. Do you accept? Cash. Um, you can however use whatever you like. Some people like to use Photoshop, I personally don't, but some people swear by it. Then there are many other alternatives out there as well. There's Spriter, AE Sprite, and so on and so on. Okay, this is the part where you need to act out your character or get someone else to do it for you. So get dressed up in something resembling the clothing of your character. You can change the colors and the actual clothing later, but it's useful to start with something that looks roughly approximate to what you want. Uh, grab any props you'll need and go nuts in front of the camera. Uh, just some things to be aware of with this step is get your camera as far away as possible to make sure everything stays in frame, especially if you're moving around a lot. A, a good tip if you're animating someone walking or running or doing some sort of large lateral movement is to follow along with them, you know, pointing the camera outside of a car like they did for Prince of Persia, or run alongside them on the street, or, you know, use a skateboard, come up with different things like that. Another thing that's important is to make sure you do multiple takes of each movement. You cannot tell when filming which one's going to look the best, so just do a bunch to make sure you cover yourself. Make sure that you or your actor, whoever's actually in the footage, <laughs> returns to a neutral pose after any movements. Uh, so that's like returning to just a normal stance. Uh, this will help you out a lot later. Apart from that, go nuts. Um, make yourself look like a total dick. Okay, once you're done, go ahead and transfer your footage over to your chosen video editing software. Now once we've got the footage in the program, what we want to do is edit out all the crap. So get rid of all the useless footage. Take this time to go ahead and look through and select the best takes from all the ones that you did. I like to personally arrange my clips with gaps in between each animation. This helps me see at a glance uh, where a new animation begins and ends. Because when you export this, they all just be black frames and they're really easy to spot. Now go ahead and scale your video so that the character fills the majority of the frame. I like to position the character's feet at the bottom of the frame and then scale from there. If your footage is poorly lit, go ahead and bump up the brightness on contrast here. Uh, this will help you later when you're drawing over what is gonna be a really scaled down version of this video. So make sure everything's nice and distinct. Now that everything's edited together how you want, we need to export the video into a usable format. So Bannerman's character sprites are 64 by 64 pixels. Uh, depending on how you scaled the character when you were editing your uh, video together, you might need to experiment here to find the exact right size to export at. 
Now, next step is to knock down the actual frame rate of the video before you export. I use eight frames per second for Batman's characters. Higher frame rates will give you a smoother animation, but will exponentially increase the number of frames that you'll have to animate later. And now all you have to do is export the finalized footage as a BMP sequence or bitmap sequence. This will basically just give you a bunch of image files in a folder that we can use for the animation. All right, time to actually get animating. So using Pixel Edit, I set up my sprite sheet with the dimensions I need as before. 64 by 64 is what I use. And you wanna go through and import each individual frame and position them on the sprite sheet. You go ahead and place your sprites roughly within the center of each frame. Don't worry about everything lining up perfectly between each frame at this point. We'll do that later. Once the frames are in place, I'll uh, create a new layer and lower the opacity on my reference layer. I do this just to help me see uh, what I'm doing later on. It's also time to select our color palette. In this case, I just import the one I've already got for Bannerman. If you're creating your own palette at this time, I'll just give you one piece of advice. Just limit your color palette. Don't use more colors than you absolutely need. Now that we've got our palette, it's uh, time to get started. So I start with creating the face for the character first. Uh, in the style that I use for Bannerman, the character's head or face doesn't really change between each frame. Um, and I'll just be copying it across to all the other frames in the animation for the most part. I then start with blocking out the character. So here I work out the basic geometry of the character, pick the colours I like and how I want their clothing to look. Once I'm happy with how the first frame looks, I go ahead and fill in the basic details for the rest of the frames. The lighting in Bannerman always comes from the upper right with shadows to the left um, that, and that's uniform across each of my characters so I just put that in now as well. It's important to remember that you don't have to trace your reference footage perfectly. This is used as a guide not an absolute. In fact you'll often find the exaggerating movement or the movement of clothing especially gives a better result at the end. Now, now that I've got my character more or less how I want him, I go back through and I add extra detail to the character. So in this case, I'm primarily adding detail to the clothing, like wrinkles and folds in the fabric. I will now add smears to the frames that contain quick or rapid movement. Now smears are frames that have an exaggerated sense of motion, then they're commonly used to convey like, you know, fast movement. Smears are used like throughout most forms of animation. The Simpsons, for example, have some really great smear frames. Like if you Google Simpson smear frames, you're probably gonna have a pretty good laugh. Once all this is done, I make sure to look through frame by frame and shift the position of any frames where the character jumps around through the animation. So a good way to keep everything looking natural is to concentrate on the foot position of the characters in each frame. Unless the character is actually stepping or running or something like that, the feet shouldn't shift around by more than a pixel or two. All right, and we're done. I export my animations as animated GIFs. Uh, they are then separated in each animation cycle and I use these directly in the game engine itself. All up creating this character from start to finish, including filming, I think took roughly four to five hours. Hey, thank you very much for watching. So this is the uh, method that I use to create all the characters for Bannerman. Uh, hopefully you found this tutorial useful in some way. Uh, if you're interested at all in the process of creating an indie game from start to finish, I would suggest you check out uh, Just Made Game, which is also on this channel as well. Uh, otherwise, again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.